going on guys welcome back to the channel hi psi tv we are in my shop today here in north carolina and i don't have really anything cool to talk about but i get a lot of questions about my bike so i'm going to do a quick little video on the bike tell you guys a little bit about it i'll uh, fire it up and i've got some rolling shots that john doc did for me the main question i get is what is it it's actually registered as a buell you can see buell buell so this bike started out as a 2004 Buell Firebolt. And basically the scenario is you buy this aftermarket frame from Twisted Choppers. It comes with the frame. I believe it comes with a rear fender and a gas tank and bars. And everything else is donated from your donor bike onto this frame. So the front forks are Buell. Front brakes are Buell wheels front fender engine transmission and the rear wheel and brake assembly are all buell and then you kind of wire up all the simple stuff you run your oil lines and whatnot um, add mirrors you got your forward controls here so that would be your brakes on this side your shifter and then basically you have like a little bar hopper um, I wouldn't really call this a bobber because it's so long, but it's it's kind of a chopper, I guess. Um, I just call it my bike. It's called a 210 drop seat frame from Twisted Choppers. And what Twisted Choppers is really known for is their donor bike uh, frames. So if you had a Sportster and you wanted to have something raked out like this, you can buy a frame that all the Sportster gear fits, or you can do a Buell uh, like this one. So I bought this bike two years ago from a buddy of mine who bought it off Craigslist. Uh, a gentleman had bought it and started putting it together and didn't finish it. So a friend of mine, Eric, bought it and finished putting it together, had it painted, and he rode it, I think, just a few times. And it's not really his style bike, so he's got a bagger now that he rides. So since I've lived in North Carolina, I haven't had a motorcycle. When I lived up in Michigan, I had a couple and uh, I actually totaled one of them. That's why I sometimes walk with a limp. I was out showing off being stupid and uh, I was riding a wheelie on the back tire, set the bike down and went to lay it over into a corner and I laid it over too far and the bike spit out from under me and we went sliding into a curb and I had to go to ICU and it was a great time. But uh, I guess that's a story for later. So I wanted something new and I, I got this because it's it's fast, but it's not street bike fast. So the bike that I told was a 2006 uh, Honda 600 RR. Not really fast, but I remember when I bought it, I rode it around for like two hours and then I was leaving my work and I really laid into the throttle and I was amazed at how fast it was and immediately thought that I shouldn't have anything that fast. But you know, I was like, cool, man. I was like 21 years old. I had a, a street bike, girls like it. I was having a good time. So uh, this, this bike is slower, sort of. I mean, it's really fast, but the thing is when you get going about 70 miles an hour, it's, that's all you really wanna do is about 70. Um, because it's a rigid frame. So rigid frame means there is no rear suspension movement. So the, the frame back here is all solid. The only frame, or I'm sorry, the only suspension movement I have is up front with the forks. So when you go over bumps, I mean, I've had the rear tire come off the ground and it, it gets a little squirrely. So if you're riding, you know, 100 miles an hour, it's a little unsafe. That, and there's nothing to protect you from the wind on this thing. So there's no windscreen, there's no fairing, there's nothing. So, you know, I always wear long sleeves when I ride it, but still, the wind at 70 is pretty harsh. So, if you're riding 100, it's going to be really bad. So anyway, I know people are going to ask about the accident that I got in with my other bike. So it was a 2006 Honda 600 RR. I'll put a picture here. And... I had had the bike for probably three or four months, maybe six months, maybe close to a year. I honestly don't remember. I had been riding long enough that I felt pretty comfortable on it. And I was at the Woodward Dream Cruise up in Detroit and me and a couple friends rode out there and I was riding like an idiot, showing off for my buddies. And uh, 
I was riding a wheelie through an industrial park and probably about 80 miles an hour, I would guess, set it down and I went into a right hand sweeping corner and then it banked over to the left again. Well, when I went to go left, I flopped the bike over really hard and it actually fell onto the asphalt. By then I had slowed down to probably 60. Hit the ground and the bike started sliding and I was behind it. The bike hit the curb and jumped it, but when it hit the curb, it started to rotate. When it rotated, the uh, the seat hit me and bounced me back out into the middle of the street. So thankfully, I didn't hit the curb. Um, I had my, my leathers on and everything, but if I would have hit the curb, I'd have probably been in a lot worse shape. So I got to go to the hospital, got to go to uh, to the ICU, and you know they, they checked me all out, and I had some road rash on my leg. Uh, I was actually wearing jeans. I had my leather jacket and jeans on and my riding boots because it was in the middle of summer. It was kind of hot. And uh, I remember I didn't want any pain medicine because you know uh, one of the guys that I was riding with called, let's see, it was my girlfriend at the time and my parents. I think it was my girlfriend. Anyway. Uh, so they, they were coming to the hospital and I didn't want to be sleeping. I wanted to be able to talk to them and like morphine knocks me out. So I'm like, no drugs, no drugs. I'm fine. It hurt, but I didn't, I wanted to be able to talk to them when they got there. So they come in and they're all crying and I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Nothing hurts. And I'm like in a neck brace and all my clothes have been cut off me. I'm laying there. And, uh, I remember the, the lady came in to start scrubbing my leg cause I had asphalt embedded in my leg. And I have never felt pain like that before. They took like a scrub brush like you clean your toilet with and poured iodine all over my leg and started scrubbing it. And she got like three strokes in and I thought I was going to throw up. I'm like, look, you have to stop. You have to stop. Get, I need something for the pain. This is, oh, I was like, oh my God. So I didn't want morphine. They gave me something else and it worked really good. So I'm laying there and uh, they had lost the, the urine sample that I gave them. I guess they wanted to make sure I wasn't on drugs or something. And uh, so she's like, I need another urine sample. Well, I'm like tied to the bed with a neck brace on. And she like hands me a funnel. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? So she's like, well, I need another sample. I'm like, well, I can't do this laying down. I have to stand up. And she's like, I can't let you stand up. I need a urine sample. I'm like, well, look, the only way you're getting it is if I stand up. And the, the nurse said, all right, I'm going to leave the room when I come back. I want a urine sample. So I was like, that's fine. I'll, I'll get it for you. So I'm laying in bed. She leaves. I sit up and I was like, okay, it doesn't hurt that bad. I swung my legs out over the bed and I went to stand up and I fell. And my my knee was kind of not under me. Like it, it collapsed. So I was like, man. So anyway, she got her urine sample. I went home after a couple days. I went back to work, felt okay. Uh, and it, so that was on my right leg and that leg is good now. Now I have issues with my left leg story for another time. But anyway, don't act stupid in front of your friends. It's not worth it. Uh, you know, now I have cars that are fast and I kind of have something around me. So if I ever really do screw up, you know, I'm kind of protected as long as I don't hit anyone else, I guess. But that's why I got something slow. I know that was kind of a long story. I hope I'm not boring you guys too bad. But anyway, I will, uh, I'll fire this thing up so you can hear it. But uh, yeah, guys, enjoy the, uh, the 2004 Buell. Oh, by the way, it has uh, LAF pipes on it. LAF, figure out what that stands for. And uh, Screaming Eagle cams, I think, as far as I know. And yeah, so here we go. All right, so there's no starter button on this thing. The, uh, you actually have to depress the plunger on the back of the starter right here next to the uh, header tube, and then the choke is on the other side of the gas tank.
All right, so there you go, the Buell. I hope to get riding this thing here again shortly because uh, the weather has been terrible here in North Carolina. It was like 40 something degrees today and it is April 9th today. So I'm gonna try to get this video up for you guys to watch tonight. And uh, if you have any more questions about the bike or anything like that, feel free to ask. You know, I, I try to respond to every comment that you guys leave. Be sure that you like this video as well because I'm trying to get out two videos a week and with nothing to work on, it's kind of hard. So you're gonna see some some stuff like this, I guess, you know, talking about projects and stuff that I have. Uh, if you guys haven't yet, order your High PSI TV shirts. I actually had someone text me the other day. They saw a uh, High PSI TV shirt out at Galat Motorsports Park. And I was like, oh, cool, man. That's, that's awesome. Represent. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next time.